Miyamoto Musashi was freshly released from his makeshift prison after three years. He has spent three long years reading The Art of War and the mountain of books that kept him company and guided his enlightenment. It was in this prison that he reformed himself from the angry animal he was and vowed to follow the path of the martial arts to master the art of war. Upon his release, he didn't even opt to go see his sister, who had acted like a mother to him before his imprisonment. I don't think that now is the time to return to the past, he said. What I have to do is take a resolute step forward into the future. As he begins to set out, Otsu runs up to him. She had promised she would wait for him. Whether it took 100 days or 1,000, it was the 970th day, and they were reunited at last. Now she wanted to know if he would take her with him. The questions raced through his agitated mind. It didn't even occur to him that she'd be there. He was thinking of one thing only. What can I do, he thought. How can I embark on my quest for truth and knowledge with a woman, with anyone, interfering all the time? She ends up selling him on the idea that she'll follow him and not bother him. She did promise that she would wait, after all, and kept her promise. And Miyamoto also had a soft spot for her, so he nods. She runs to get her bag of things to hit the road, and when she gets back, Miyamoto is nowhere to be found. In the place where he stood on the bridge, he had carved the words, Forgive me. The mission that he was embarking on was too important. He didn't have time for anything else. At the end of his quest, he would become the greatest samurai that the world ever knew. But then we have Hicks and Gracie, the Brazilian version of Miyamoto Musashi, one of the best jiu-jitsu practitioners of all time, who made his name fighting in Japan, embodying the samurai spirit. He and Kim Stavik knew each other by reputation, but when they officially met at a concert, they had an instant connection, and Kim felt that they knew each other from a past life. He was focused on jiu-jitsu and fighting at the time, and while they began dating, she attended his first ever Valley Tudo tournament in Rio against King Zulu. This is a no-holds-barred, no-rules type of fighting that preluded MMA. Eventually, Kim got pregnant with Hoxon, and they married and would end up with four children together. He was focused on his fighting career, but she ended up as his manager, negotiating big contracts for him as a prize fighter in Japan, fighting for the honor of his family, much like a samurai. She was beautiful, and they had a strong connection, but what's interesting is he felt that he wasn't choosing a partner over his ultimate goal. He had his cake, and he ate it too. But which philosophy is right? I must say, I've not finished the book about Musashi that I'm talking about, so maybe he gets with Otsu in the end. Don't spoil it for me. But the point still stands. He chose to go follow his path, overtaking the risk of love that might slow him down even a little bit. And in reality, we know it actually would. But the real answer, I would say, would probably depend on a case-by-case -case basis. One woman will hinder, one will help. I think it's very rare when you have a woman who you have a strong connection with who isn't a siren and will actually help you on your quest. It's a rare woman indeed. And if you find her, you should hold on to her and never let her go.